What you guys got another video five things to know before optimizing windows 10 and windows 11 i see so many websites and so many youtube videos and so many people asking for help because they've uh, removed something from their computer or it's not working correctly or or something like that after running scripts or running programs that do certain tweaks to their pc or running batch files or making registry edits and they can't remember what they've done and it's completely jacked up their operating system and now they want help fixing it so let me first talk about some of the five things that you need to look out for before doing any of this stuff first off it goes without saying that you should be creating a restore point or you should be creating a backup of your system just to make sure you can go back if something breaks let's talk about scripts itself there's tons of them out there chris titus tech has got a script and there's a bunch of other ones out there that i'm not going to cover all of these we're just going to be talking about scripts in general and programs like uh, o and o shut up 10 and things like that so let's first talk about uh, scripts in general now what a lot of scripts will do will debloat windows and lighten the load up a little bit especially if you're using an older system uh, some of these uh, scripts can sort of debloat it a little bit and remove a lot of bloat that people don't need the problem with debloat scripts is the fact that a lot of these are going to uh, remove key components that you might need because everyone has sort of different programs they like to use on windows and guess what there might be a feature on windows or a program on windows that you've now removed by running a script and it might not be possible to put that back this is the problem with scripts so looking at the ultimate windows utility by chris titus tech here you can see it's as simple as copying this code and running this in powershell and it's going to then ask you to run certain things on your PC to remove a bunch of bloat. Now, what a lot of these script creators will also do in some of their licensing or some of their blurb at the bottom of the page here will also detach themselves from any sort of liability. And Chris is no different. And again, this is not a pop at Chris or anyone else. It's a fact that they're trying to offer something, but obviously, you know, take away any sort of responsibility from themselves. It says uh, misuse of this utility can break your install, so please be careful. And I do not provide any help or assistance should this happen. So that's basically saying if you use this at your own risk, if it breaks your system, it's on you, buddy. It's nothing to do with me. And that's what a lot of these creators will do that create these scripts. And this is a real big problem because a lot of people will run this and then they come on the Discord server and ask me to help them fix it and undo some of the changes that's happened. And sometimes that's not possible. And the only way to fix it is doing a fresh install. There's another thing here is I would definitely not run this on a business PC. And in the UK, if you did that, you'd probably be sacked. So you couldn't be running this on a computer that's on the network in any sort of company. So in the UK, it might be different to America. And you can see a lot of these uh, scripts will also say this disclaimer. You're doing this at your own risk. I have not responsible for any data loss or damage that may occur it's not guaranteed that every feature removed from this system can be easily restored it's telling you right there and this is what happens when you're running scripts like these so you have to be mindful before you run any of these sort of scripts on your pc so what are the bloat scripts and what are they doing well they are removing certain key components from the computer and this can also cause instability and even system crashes. Plus, they can also remove Windows Defender and a bunch of other security features on that computer. So bear that in mind, if you remove that, you are going to be vulnerable to malware, viruses, ransomware, and other nasties out there on the internet. And you don't even have to download anything. You can just visit a page or click on something and you are done. So without any sort of protection, you are running a major security risk on your computer now a lot of these scripts run differently uh, this one from chris titus is just basically putting a bit of code into uh, powershell here and it will go ahead and open up the application as you can see here so the first risk is some of these uh, installers here as long as they're coming from the source i.e this is coming from discord and this is coming from say for instance matrix and this is coming from uh, python 3 and it's actually coming from those locations from the actual source then these are okay but a lot of people don't understand they go clicking on a lot of this stuff and if someone on the internet has created something like this then you have to be careful because you 
not everyone is going to be as honest as, say, for instance, Chris Titus Tech. Some of them may have some sort of devious side to them where they're trying to get you infected. So you have to be a bit careful. Not everyone is honest on the internet. When it comes to tweaks, again, we can see here, uh, there's the essential tweaks and advanced tweaks with caution, as you can see here in big letters. And these are basically disabling UAC, which is a security feature in Windows, although it's not the best in the world, but it's still a security feature. Removing OneDrive and a bunch of other things here, like Microsoft Edge and things like that, which can break the operating system. Hence why it's in the advanced section under caution. Again, up here we've got desktop. When you put it in desktop, it's going to remove Chris's recommended settings. Some people don't even go this far and they just let you just tick what you like and let you run it. And of course, this can break the system. So he has sort of thought about uh, the fact that uh, he's trying to protect you by keeping everything essential and also advanced here. So let me just run this. And I've run this now on the system. Once you reboot the system, you will see a lot of processes removed and a lot of bloat removed from the PC. It's not perfect. There's still some stuff you have to do after the fact. But again, that's what the bloating is. Let's move on to number two, custom ISOs. Custom Windows 10 and Windows 11 ISOs are a major risk to your Windows security if you're getting them from untrustworthy sources and if you haven't created them yourself. Ones like Tiny11 and bunches of other Windows ISOs and hence why I never shared the ISO that I created because I want people to be able to make their own and show them how to do it themselves so that way you can be 100% sure that you are using a so-called uh, clean ISO that you created yourself. Now you can use programs like NT Lite and also programs or scripts like MSMG Toolkit and this is going to allow you to debloat uh, your ISO or Windows, remove key features like Windows Defender, uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, integrate uh, drivers and programs and updates and things like that. So you can do a bunch of stuff and I've made videos on this in the past. Again, you still have to trust the source, which is the program that you're using. And a lot of these are going to be unknown publisher programs, which haven't got a license and things like that, which is obviously a risk when you're running them on your system because obviously you have no clue of what this is doing in the background. And when you're creating the ISO, it could embed stuff. And this is the problem with this sort of stuff. I'm not suggesting any uh, of these sites are doing them, any of this sort of stuff. I'm not saying NT Lite is doing that. I'm not saying MSMG Toolkit is doing that. I'm not saying that Chris Titus Tech is doing that with his script. I'm just saying the risk is there when you do these types of things. And this gets back to the number three, which is risk of malware or infection or embedded uh, key loggers or embedded, uh, you know, backdoors that they can add into uh, these programs that will basically install themselves. Also, scripts and things like that, uh, you know, programs like, for instance, Atlas OS. Again, this is another unknown publisher asking you to disable your antivirus program, which is there to protect you. And again, you're having to disable it to run the, the package that they offer to make tweaks to your computer. Again, this is where the risk is involved and you have to accept that yourself. Again, if you read their terms and conditions, it will say you do this at your own risk. They'll de detach themselves from any sort of liability and put the blame or emphasis on you. So you're having to make that decision yourself whether you want to do any of this sort of stuff to your computer. And it goes for any of these scripts. Sometimes you have to disable your antivirus to be able to run these on your computer, which obviously is a major concern for a lot of people. So that is the risk element when you're running programs like these or scripts or you're running, uh, you know, ISOs on your system and installing them as your operating system like Tiny11. You still have to be careful, even if the creator will make a post and say, there's nothing in my ISO. There may not be. But at the end of the day, you're having to trust a person that you don't even know that's coming off of the Internet and they, they might have other uh, agendas. Uh, you know, so you've got to be very, very careful. Let's talk about number four, which is placebo versus reality. What gains are you expecting to get when you're doing all of this to your computer? You're definitely going to be running the risk of instability, crashes, uh, bugs, problems when you click on things because you've removed them. And yes, there is a lot of stuff on here that is bloat, but it's not running on the system. A lot of this stuff like WhatsApp is not installed. You can just click here, uninstall. 
but that's not running on the computer until you install it. It's only when you click on it will it actually install. So you could just quite easily click on this and click uninstall here. If I click on it, you'll see it will suddenly say installing and you'll see the little bar there starting to install this on the computer. It's that simple. So they're not really running. And uh, here you go, it's starting to install and I'm going to uninstall it. So it wants me to launch it. So it wasn't really installed on the system. And I'm going to quickly uninstall this. There we go. Now, if you're one of these people that go on YouTube and looking to get the most performance out of your PC, you're going to see a bunch of YouTubers out there creating content about this is the best tweak ever. And it's the same thing in, you know, NVIDIA control panel tweaks. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen those videos, but there's tons of them up there and uh, they just get rehashed every single time. A new secret hidden feature that you never knew about. And it's the same thing. But at the end of the day, what do you expect to get? from these tweaks. It's a placebo, really. You're not going to gain the amount of performance that these people are telling you. None of them show you a before and after of the gains that you're getting. And this is because there is no gains. Uh, if it is, it's all within margin of error. So bear that in mind if you're running that you know these sort of tweaks to try and get more FPS. Now if you're having to go into Windows and remove a lot of key components using scripts and uh, disabling a lot of stuff just to get some sort of uh, you know stability to your system and maybe your CPU is running super high maybe uh, this is running at 100% but that's because you're running a 10 or 11 year old computer maybe it's time to think about upgrading sometimes the best performance gains you can get is by upgrading to a faster CPU or a better GPU or even changing your mechanical drive to an SSD or adding a little bit more RAM in your system can also add a little bit more performance uh, to that system, especially if you're running, you know, Windows 10 on an old system that wasn't really designed for Windows 10, and it's only got two gigabytes of RAM, which is something we had on Discord the other day. <laughs> you know, trying to run Windows 10 on two gigabytes of RAM, it's just it's it's laughable. But let's talk about the last one, which is number five, telemetry, which is probably the biggest one out of everything, which is basically telemetry is automatically collects and transmits and measures your data on your computer from a remote source, which is Microsoft servers using sensors and other devices to collect data. So basically, uh, you cannot stop telemetry 100%. So if you're looking to uh, get inside Windows and look at the code, and you can't. It's locked out, and you won't be able to do that. All you can do is run programs and scripts to try and de-bloat. There is features inside here which you can turn off, like this one here. Uh, but again, I can tell you right now that doing this is not going to completely stop Microsoft viewing and collecting data. If you use something like Wireshark, which is a networking monitoring software, you will basically see a ton of services that are connecting from Microsoft uh, to your computer or all times when you open up applications. If you went in here and open up the snipping tool, you'll probably see there'll be a different type of connection to Microsoft with this. I've looked at it myself, uh, paint and things like that. When you open this up, uh, it will also open up something to Microsoft. Now, it doesn't mean they're viewing exactly what you're doing. It's basically collecting data so they can uh, understand how their programs are working, how their PC is working with different hardware and different drivers, and they can then support you better. That's the reason why telemetry is around today. Unfortunately, there's some misuse of uh, telemetry, which is obviously harvesting data uh, and obviously using it in the wrong means. Again, Microsoft have shared what they have shared and said that they are not collecting your personal information. They're just collecting data about your computer and obviously using that to improve their operating systems. Whether you believe that or not is entirely up to you. But that is probably the five things that you need to know before you start even think about optimizing Windows 10 or Windows 11, the risks and also the other things that I've mentioned in this video. It's been a bit of a long video, been waffling on quite a bit, so I'm going to end this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comments section below what you guys uh, think about uh, optimizing and about telemetry and about placebo and reality, malware risks, you know, custom ISOs and debloating. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section, but I'll be happy to read your comments 
and I shall catch you in the next video. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye for now.